dare I say it, a monumental day in the uh, history of college football, who just celebrated its 150th year, and in year 151, or what would have been 151, there'll be no Big Ten football in the fall, and maybe not till fall of 21. For more on that, we bring in uh, Steve Hellwagon, who covers Ohio State, for Bucknuts.com. He's with us here on the Williams Tractor Hotline. Steve, uh, well, what, what can you say? What a day. Yeah, crazy time. I don't think anybody was really expecting this type of uh, major decision like this to come out. I mean, it's been kind of in the offing, I guess, and, and you thought maybe they would reconsider and just postpone the season. But as it turned out, uh, this was the final decision that uh, they're going to go ahead without uh, football this fall, and we'll just have to see how it all works out. So, so how did we get here from less than a week ago, there is a television show where the Big Ten announces its schedule to less than a week later, no football in, in the fall at all? Yeah, it's been a strange uh, time, certainly, to go from announcing the season last Wednesday and uh, publishing a schedule and putting it out there. I think uh, what uh, the commissioner, Kevin Warren, was kind of uh, putting out there was the fact that um, uh, some athletes that have been stricken with the virus have uh, come down with a heart condition that has really weakened the heart. And I think until more is known about that, and the uh, side effects of of having that kind of a, a heart issue, I think that uh, they were not inclined to go forward. So in in many respects, that's what this decision seems to be pinned upon, is the, the fact that uh, some athletes have had a tough time uh, recovering from having COVID-19 and experienced some of those heart issues. So, again, uh, I don't know if this is something that's just emerged in the last week or something that's been in the offing, but maybe that's uh, just what their medical experts have come back with and, and really made the president kind of uh, pause. I think that the coaches were unified in their idea that the, the fall season should go ahead. Ryan Day was on ESPN2 yesterday, College Football Live, talking about it and uh, really pushing that idea. Jim Harbaugh got behind that idea, certainly, with a letter that he posted and and you've got Scott Frost, who was militant about the idea yesterday from Nebraska, uh, to the point where there's people rumoring, you know, will one or two of these schools peel off and still try and schedule some games this fall. So, you know, I don't know where what the future is going to hold. Uh, it's an uncertain future, I think, right now for college football, the Big Ten. Uh, I mean, obviously the Pac-12 has followed suit. And now it just leaves you to wonder, is the a- ACC, SEC, or Big 12 uh, also going to uh, to follow suit and cancel the season. So, I had all all any any and all options are up in the air right now. It seems like so with the with the statement obviously that Scott Frost made and made, and then Jim Harbaugh and, and some of the larger schools. Do they have any any of these schools that really want to go out and play? Do they have any legal wiggle room to go schedule a ten game season if they wanted to? Yeah, that's a great question. That's one of many questions that Dave Repson, the host for the Big Ten Network, asked Kevin Warren. Can He asked him point blank, can Nebraska peel away and go do their own thing and schedule games? And some people on Twitter have been of the opinion that the, the contractual obligations, uh, that all the schools are tied to one another and, and that it seems unlikely that one can do that. Um, and yet, uh, Kevin did not offer that type of a definitive answer to the question. And in, in fact, he didn't answer, <laughs> provide a definitive answer to many of the questions. I mean, his own son apparently plays at Mississippi State and was asked, does this mean, you know, you're going to consider, you know, him not playing this fall? And, and that it was kind of a separate decision, a, a big, what was best for the Big Ten and then a family issue, kind of two separate things. But if, to be honest with you, you know, if, if it's so, so bad that an entire conference full of team and athletes can't play because of a potential heart issue, I'm not sure I'd want my son out there playing either, but I guess that's something that'll be settled for another day. Just, I don't know what's going on guys. I mean, it, it's just so many, there's so many discrepancies and so many things that you, know, you say, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But you know, you just keep coming back and people are like, I'll oh, just push it off to the spring. Well, You know, I I never played college football at that level, but I can tell you the idea of having to play 20 or 22 games 
in one calendar year doesn't seem to make much of a sense. There's a reason why there's a nine month off season in no. this sport because the guys and, get beat up so bad, right? That, uh, that they need it to, to to recover. And, yeah. How, uh, how how could you, uh, Steve, um, say no no football for player safety, and then say, oh, by the way, you're playing 24 games in one year? I mean, yeah, it's, it's I just hypocritical. I don't envision. Yeah, I don't envision that at all. I think. About the only thing to me that would make sense and maybe kind of whet the appetite of, of football fans is to put together what I've kind of termed a, quote, preview season in the spring where maybe you practice for three weeks on campus and then play four games, you know, which maybe for a Big Ten school would be maybe one at home against a MAC opponent, maybe one against an American Conference opponent like Cincinnati or somebody and then maybe two against Big Ten teams that, that you don't figure to play late in 2021. So you could almost call them, I don't know, exhibition scrimmages, but uh, kind of, a, I say, a preview season, you know, a 2021 preview. And any of the seniors who want to play to showcase themselves for the draft, or, you know, I doubt that you'd have a Justin Fields who'd be a first-round pick who'd want to put himself out there and get, Injured, but you know, let's say Jonathan Cooper, who's a defensive end for Ohio State, who could have used another year to bolster his NFL hopes. Maybe he's a guy who gets out there and plays a little bit in some of these games to showcase himself for the NFL still. And you get the best of both worlds. You get a little bit of a taste of it in the spring, and it really gets you going and ready. You know, plus the young kids can get in there and get some experience before the real bullets start to fly in the fall. But uh, and a championship is on the line. But beyond that, it it doesn't make any sense, and I can't see it happening. Let me me ask you this just from a, I mean, just from a a media member's perspective, a fan's perspective. We're down here on pins and needles waiting to hear from the SEC. We haven't heard a thing. What's the been your reaction, your interaction with some Ohio State fans when the news comes down? Is it defiance that we're going to go, you know, we're going to figure this out and we're going to go play a separate schedule, or is it just complete, you know, just anarchy? Complete anarchy. They are very upset with uh, Kevin Warren and the Big Ten for caving in their mind in this situation. And yet, you know, this is the fans' viewpoint. They don't have a son or a daughter playing these sports, so it's not a personal issue to them. Now, a lot of the parents who checked in on Twitter have been very upset in their own right that they're not playing, that, uh, you know, you think about these football kids, they started coming back to Columbus three months into the pandemic in June 5th and had to go through all these hoops and protocols and everything just to work out for the last two months for the hope that there would be a season. And now there isn't, you know, Mm -hmm. they prepared for two months as if there's a season and now there isn't one. So, you know, the whole thing to me, uh, I can understand people being upset about it, both inside the sport and outside the sport. And, uh, again, you know, football is just part of our American way of life. And <laughs> you, you take that away, and people are going to be upset. And, uh, you know, it just it's a sad day. It really is. Uh, just as it was sad back in March when they canceled the NCAA basketball tournament. I yeah. mean, you know, that means so much to a lot of people, the March Madness. And uh, it was gone, and now – you know, perhaps uh, as big or bigger an institution, college football is gone, and uh, at least for people in the Big Ten region. And you know, it is what it is, but uh, not a not a happy day for sure. We're talking with Steve Hellwagon from uh, Bucknuts.com, covering Ohio State with the uh, news of the uh, Big Ten decision today. So, if has it, uh, Zach and I were just talking about this a minute ago, and we talked about it a couple times, but I've never heard anybody in charge be asked this. Because there was going to be protocols with, uh, you know, I think testing twice a week. So if Team A has nobody on the field who has the virus, and then Team B has nobody on the field who has the virus, how is anyone going to get the virus? You know, you got me. That's another (laughs) one of them questions that uh, is just unbelievable. Uh, And what they're saying, you know, is, is some of the risk involved in, just staging the game, traveling, uh, you know, whatever it might be, staying at a hotel, whatever it could be, could lead somebody to contract it. And, you know, perhaps there is that infinitesimal uh, possibility, but you you got a great point that if testing is as rigorous 
as it's supposed to be, then how is there a risk? How is there a risk? I, I don't know. And, uh, you know, gosh, guys, there's risk in crossing the street. Right. There's risk in driving your car mm-hmm. downtown. Risk the, in getting on an airplane, but we do it all every day. There's risk in, so, foot, in football uh, just uh, in, in non-COVID. I mean, neck injuries yeah. uh, and all, all of that stuff. CTE, uh, concussions. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I am somewhat dumbfounded by the whole thing, to be honest with you. And I wish that uh, they'd come up with any other solution but this. I know Ryan Day was very defiant yesterday on television, hoping that uh, at worst they'd just push it back two or three weeks and hope that uh, maybe some numbers don't look quite as bad. But, uh, you know, the fact is that the numbers really didn't get much better from May until now, and uh, this is what we're left at. So, uh, you know, I'm not happy about it. and Nobody seems to be, and for your guys' sake, I hope you have SEC football. <laughs> I, I hope it's as glorious as it, as it can be under these conditions. But, uh, you know, it, 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 it just, again, just not uh, what anybody's hoping for. So how long will it be before Harbaugh sends out the tweet saying he didn't lose to Ohio State this year? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. You, you know, the calendar year of 2020 is going to come and go. Uh, the thing is, it's been all the way back to 2011, so the next chance that they will have, it'll be nine full years until, uh, or maybe I guess uh, well, it'll be 2021. It would be ten full years until uh, they have a chance to get that next win. So I don't know. It's, uh, it's it, Again, it, it, it's kind of like the dominance of Alabama. You know, when you think about it, that they were always a, a marquee program. But then they took things to another level this past decade and kind of left everybody in their wake for lack of red term. And I think some of the, the same things happened here with Urban Meyer. He picked up what Jim Trestle had, which was very good, and made it even better. And uh, Michigan with Jim Harbaugh, Brady Hope, whoever's been the coach, has just been unfortunate to, to have been there at a time when Ohio State's had the best 10-year run in its history. We just, so, got, a, we, we just got a question from one of our listeners about uh, uh, high school football in Ohio. It's a huge deal in Ohio. Does today's decision affect that, or what's the status of high school football in the state of Ohio? No, it's weird. The state government here seems to be leaning toward allowing it, although it would be a truncated six-game regular season. And then, un- unlike normal years, everybody in the state who plays a six-game season would then be eligible for the playoffs. So they'd add an extra couple rounds of the playoffs to let everybody in. So, you know, it could be, depending on how good your team is, you'll play anywhere from 7 to 13 games possibly. But, uh, you know, the majority would only play uh, seven games or whatever. But uh, that's what they're coming at right now. Um, schools are, are practicing and hopeful that the government and the governor uh, we'll allow full contact football this fall. Take care. All right, Take Steve care. Hellwagon, uh, Bucknuts.com, part of 247, covering Ohio State with us here on the Williams Tractor Hotline.